Yeah, that's right, we are back. I'm back with a brand new video. Okay, yeah, that's right, we're back at it again with our dark Nickelodeon theories. I guess I could say I love ruining our childhoods. If you guys missed part one, what the heck are you doing with your life? Well, you know what, I got you guys, I got you. Click right over here, get caught up part one, and then this is part two. So prepare yourselves for this one, guys, because the theories on this one are even darker than part one. Well, how's it going, YouTube? I'm your host for this one, Landon Do Not Sing, and I might just sing in this video for you guys. I don't know if that's a good idea. So stay tuned for that if it happens. And I'll see if you guys are paying attention when I sing. Let me know which part I sang in in the comment section below. Time coded or put hashtag uh, number six. Let's see if you guys are paying attention. All right, now of all that, let's dive right into this one. This is the top 10 scary Nickelodeon theories part two. And let me know if I should make a part three. Hey Arnold, well it's actually all about Helga's a miserable life and this depressing theory starts off this list in at number 10. You think from the title of the show that it's exclusively about Arnold, but I'm here to share you guys a new perspective. Apparently Hey Arnold is secretly about the antagonist Helga and her depression. Well stay with me for a minute. Helga is a mean bully who constantly picks on Arnold, calling him hey football head but secretly she's in love with him well let's review the facts in the intro Helen can be heard screaming hey Arnold several times she's the only person in the show that has her own monologue in every episode so it can be possible that everything we're seeing is actually from her point of view I mean pretty interesting right well her life isn't that glamorous so that's why she feels the need to bully the one person she loves the most her father is extremely neglectful and her mother is an alcoholic so maybe this show is all about her obsession with Arnold and how she copes with her miserable life by focusing just on him. And you know what, I warned you guys that this is gonna get pretty dark. And you know what, I'm pretty sure we just ranked Hey Arnold on our new channel. It's, you guys can click right over here. It's called Tier List and the channel is just blowing up. It's getting tens of thousands of views and you guys are subscribing like crazy. So I just wanna take this opportunity to say thank you guys so much. And our newest Tier List, I'm pretty sure we ranked uh, cartoons or childhood TV shows. And also if you guys check out the channel, it should be up by now. We did hot sauces and things got insane. Like you guys are gonna wanna go check that out. Number nine, the Smurfs are racist. Well, that was pretty blunt, but let's take a look at our beloved Smurfs. You know, the blue little guys. This there is referring to the Smurfs as blue supremacists and I'll explain why. Apparently the Smurfs are actually a racist and Nazi-like cult because of their pointed white hat and their leader's pointed red hat, which is pretty related to the KKK. And let's talk about how the first comic strip titled The Black Smurfs is actually pretty inappropriate when you analyze it. In this comic, when the Smurfs become sick, they turn black. And when they become black, they lose all traces of their intelligence, they can no longer speak. Because of this, US publishers refused to publish this comic, and years later, the Smurfs were actually recolored from blue to purple. I didn't know that. Well, there are so many other racist moments that can be found in the Smurfs, but I'm not trying to make this video an hour long and you know what, demonetize, so let's move on. Pinky and the Brain, one of my favorite cartoons, makes its way onto this list at number eight. They're Pinky and the Brain. Yes, Pinky and the Brain. One is a genius and the other's insane. Okay, I don't want your guys his ears to continue bleeding so grab that tissue behind you guys and there's no tissue well I'm sorry about that and good luck getting that out of your brain today pinky and the brain like it's, it's pretty contagious one of the reasons why I love the show you get to hear the intro every single episode so the lyrics of the song actually tell us that one is a genius and the other is insane I think we all believe that pinky is a dumb one and brain is a smart one I'm, I'm pretty sure I came to that conclusion but what if we had it all wrong wrong all these years. I mean, did I just shatter your childhood? Well, let's think about it for a minute because it's actually it actually makes a lot of sense. The brain tries to take over the world every single day, but his plan always fails. Pinky is actually pretending to be dumb because he finds it hilarious. Some people also believe that Pinky is a genius who can escape at any time, but he's running tests on the brain. So essentially, the brain is Pinky's lab rat. And you know what? I might be able to get on board with this theory. I mean, it kind of makes sense here. What do you guys think? Next up, number seven, we're talking about the Power Rangers. Well, this dark theory ruined the Power Rangers for me. Well, this dark theory states that the Power Rangers are actually child soldiers who are forced to fight against their will. I mean, is is this real life right now? That just got deep. 
That got dark. Well, let's see. Zordon literally recruits teenagers from Earth to fight in a war between his people and Rita Repulsa. But in order to do this, he gives them special gadgets, bright outfits, and magical abilities. So now that they're blinded by all this cool stuff, because you know what? Who would it be? He essentially forces them to fight against hundreds of monsters in a war that they shouldn't even be a part of. They should be teenagers, you know, going on dates, doing homework. Well, I actually, I hated homework. I, I skipped out on homework and just went out with my buddies. Bikini Bottom is actually a nuclear wasteland, and this scary theory takes us to number six. Did you guys ever get the feeling that Bikini Bottom is a weird place? Well, I know SpongeBob SquarePants is just a cartoon, but it doesn't look like the bottom of the ocean. So let's step outside the fact that this is just a cartoon. Bikini Bottom is named after its location. It's located at the bottom of Bikini Atoll, which exists in real life. And between 1946 and 1958, more than 67 nuclear devices were detonated in this area, including bombs that exploded underwater. So basically, the characters of SpongeBob SquarePants aren't just a bunch of funny characters. They are the result of radiation poisoning and mutation. Drake and Josh crash this list just like that at number five. I personally never watched this show, but I just couldn't ignore this dark theory. This show is about two stepbrothers who live together despite being different from one another, but this theory isn't exactly about the two brothers. It's about another character from the show called Crazy Steve, who is an insane employee who works at the local theater. Well, after the final season, Crazy Steve murdered Drake and Josh, kidnapped their sister Megan, took her to Seattle, forced her to change her name to Carly, made her call him Spencer, and he he also made her pretend that he is her brother. Which brings us to the plot of iCarly. Moving up this list, number four, Steve from Blue's Clues is on a very long drug induced trip. I actually had the chance to see a lot of the filming for Blue's Clues, a lot of behind the scenes, met a lot of the actors, and uh, it's a really cool show. Well, let me show you guys this clip. Oh, hi. Do you hear something? Yeah. No, Steve, you gotta lay off the drugs. You have your whole life ahead of you. Well, Blue's Clues might not be as innocent as we all thought. This theory states that Steve is actually a single dad who lives in a crack house with his neglected child. Well, do you guys remember hearing a child's voice in the episode? Well, listen to this. Listen, do you know who's making those sounds? <laughs> Shovel and pail. Oh yeah, it's Shovel and Pale. Yeah, yeah, Steve, it's your poor child trying to talk to you. Apparently that voice is Steve's actual child trying to get his attention, and Blue is just a stuffed dog from Steve's childhood. Hey Arnold's Real Parents is back on this list again at number three. The show ran for almost eight years without ever really clarifying who Arnold's parents are and what really happened to them. I mean, I wondered for years, but get ready for your brain to explode. Arnold's Real Parents are his grandparents, and they've been lying to him for all of these years. They either suffer from dementia or another mental illness, so that's why the reason why Phil and Gertie are lying to their actual son, and it kind of explains Arnold's oddly shaped head. So basically, because they had Arnold at such a young age, that puts them at a high risk for a child born with a deformity. Arnold suffers from Arnold Charisy Syndrome, and that's why his parents decided to call him Arnold. Max and Ruby's dead parents, and this dark theory takes us by Storm at number two. Max and Ruby is a cartoon about two young bunny siblings who get into a lot of adventures. But the crazy thing is, we never see their parents, so what really happened to them? Well, the real reason why their parents aren't seen on the show is because they died in a car accident on their way to pick up Ruby from Bunny Scouts. Max was in the car and survived, but now suffers from brain injuries, so that's why Max is always messing up in the show, and his sister Ruby has to take care of him and watch him closely. I mean, pretty interesting. It seems like a logical theory to me. And finally, topping our list, at number one, we have the seven deadly sins. Yeah, that's right. SpongeBob SquarePants makes another appearance on this list. We could probably do like a top 10 SpongeBob on its own if we haven't already. I don't know. We've done a lot on this channel. Well, I guess this show is just full of crazy dark fan theories, so let's jump into another one. I mean, shall we? Apparently, one of the main characters represents one of the seven deadly sins. Patrick is sloth because he's lazy. Squidward is wrath because he's always angry. Mr. 
crabs is greed, and that's pretty obvious in the show. Sandy represents pride, Plankton is envy, Gary is gluttony, because he's always hungry, and SpongeBob is lust. Now that I'm aware of this theory, I actually look at these characters very different when I watch it, and yeah, I'm still watching SpongeBob. I mean, who isn't? And I don't know if you're gonna be able to watch this show the same way ever again after learning about that. Well, there you guys have it. This is the end of the video. I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys all Maybe in like the tier list channel that we have, you guys can click in the links down below. You guys can see me on that channel. I'm in every single video. I'm the main host of it. And you'll see Rebecca, Che, and Eamon on that channel, which I don't think Eamon has been on it yet because she's actually been away, which is why you guys haven't seen her on this channel, but she's not gone. She'll be back. That's it for me, guys, for this video. I will see you guys in the next Most Amazing Top 10 video.